Talk Radio. Hello, and welcome to the Astro Energy Astrology Show on Blog Talk Radio with me, astrologer Shelley Overton. Each week, we go over the planetary positions, discuss astrology, and take callers' questions. If you would like to call in and get a reading, you can call 347-994-3365. Call in early as the lines fill up. Welcome to the October 23rd, 2018 Astro Energy Astrology Show. I am Shelly Overton. I'm an astrologer in Orlando, Florida. I am excited to be here with you this week and help you understand a little bit more about astrology and go over some of the planetary aspects and see if it's all good. So um, I'm here in Orlando. It's been a good week. We had a pretty day yesterday. It was fairly clear and 80 degrees. It's 76 right now. We're on our way up to 82 with a little bit of rain. Looks like the Midwest is getting a little bit cold. Denver, Rapid City, and Flagstaff even, 45 degrees. It's the actual weather here with Shelly. Anyway, Minneapolis, 31 degrees. Very chilly there. So we are going to be talking about the full moon this week, and hopefully you all can hear me. I will just give you a little test here. If you want a reading and you're uh, calling in, push one on the keypad, and if you push one now, I'll know you want a reading, and I'll also know you can hear me. So, yay, you can hear me. (laughs) Congratulations. So we're going to take calls at the bottom of the hour, and I'm going to let you know what's going on at the top of the hour, which is now. So we have an interesting week coming up. We've got a full moon tomorrow, and I'll tell you, Let's see, tomorrow, this is what it says in my planner. We have the moon in conjunct Jupiter, which I can see is going to be a bit difficult today. The moon is in conjunct Mercury, and it moves on to Jupiter tomorrow. And in conjunct is 108, excuse me, 150 degrees apart. So in the sky around the Earth, 360 degrees of a circle, you have 150 degrees of that circle Two planets are in each corner of that. One is Mercury and one is the moon. And it's planets, quote, of course, the moon and the sun are lights because they're stars and and a satellite. But uh, we call them planets as a group just for ease. But anyway, Mercury is 150 degrees apart from the moon. And that means that how we express ourselves, our nurturing nature, I don't know if that even makes sense to you. What we do to feel at home, what we do to feel connected, what we do um, as a means of engaging a family member or even, you know, just to feel security is at odds with how we are expressing ourselves right now. Interestingly, the moon is naturally water driven. And I mean, that means emotions. But um, it is in conjunct right now because it's in a fire sign, which is Aries. So it's expressing itself wanting to be nurtured by aggressively expressing through more of a masculine filter. So we are attacking. We are causing fights. Quite honestly, you know, you may even have fights in the home because that's the energy of Aries. Aries wants to get its blood going, get riled up and will will nitpick or attack or pick fights basically especially with this energy of Uranus getting so close to going back into Aries or having kind of a an exacerbation of this energy on top of the fact that even more pronounced of a fighter is Scorpio and that's the sign moon is in conjunct to and so Mercury in the sign of Scorpio wants to take it to the mat and say, okay, you want to fight, I'll give you a fight, 
I'm going to fight to the death. That's what scorpions do. They'll fight to the death. Or even think of the imagery of the phoenix, which is a secondary image of Scorpio. So it'll burn it all down. If What Scorpio will do is it will attempt to cooperate. Because remember, when you put Scorpio on the first house, the 12th house is Libra, the, the diplomat, the one that wants peace. So psychologically or hidden, Scorpios really do want peace. But they'll attempt to make it work. They'll attempt to do something. They'll express emotion. They'll forage around and find information on things, you know, and try and get you aware of the deeper truth of a matter. And they'll keep working and working and they'll really, they express emotion. So the moon rules emotion and Scorpio, again, a water sign is an emotional sign. So they're really working to get that truth out and then help convince you. But it is also about how we are valued by others. And so with Mercury and Scorpio, they're saying, okay, you want to fight. I'm going to give you everything I have gathered in my bag of tricks, which is a lot of unseen information. It's hidden. It's, you know, the people who are going to come out and give you like um, the whistleblowers, which is coming, by the way. <laughs> and that's coming when Mercury, the sun, Venus all gets to Sagittarius. And then ultimately Jupiter gets to Sagittarius also this year around the ninth. So let me just double check that date again. Yeah, I can give you the exact date here. Where did my glasses go? <laughs> just seeking my glasses. So what's going on with Mercury in conjunct to the moon is a lot of passion, a lot of anger. And uh, we're finding out some hidden secrets because Mercury, again, Mercury likes to talk, wants to express. And because it's in Scorpio, it's going to express through emotions. It's going to play on your emotions. Uh, when Mercury gets to Sagittarius, and again, Mercury does go retrograde soon here. So let me just call that up. Um, I'm actually looking up two different things. So uh, Jupiter goes into Sagittarius on the 8th at 7.38 a.m., so the first full day is the 9th. But uh, 7.30 a.m. Eastern, 4.30 a.m. Pacific on the 9th of November. So Jupiter will enter Sagittarius, and you can bet that is going to be a week of revelations. Um, it is also going to be expanding from, say, politics and sex, which is Scorpio's realm, into religion, into probably um, education, what's being hidden in those realms as well. Um, and so Mercury goes retrograde around the 17th of November. So let's just flip over and, and verify the exact day and time of that. So Mercury, actually, it's the evening before, 8.33 p.m. on the 16th of November. Mercury goes retrograde, and earlier in that day at 5.51 a.m., Venus goes direct. So in the very same day on the 16th, Venus changes direction to say, I am no longer going back over where I've been. I know what I want, and now I'm going direct. And then Mercury says, yes, but I haven't been able to speak everything I wanted to speak, and now I'm going retrograde. So um, in that day... Mercury will be at 13 degrees Sagittarius, and that means that there will be some backpedaling with whatever revelations we have in the near future. Let's see. Mercury goes into Sagittarius on the 1st, so, or at least uh, by the table. Let me look at the exact date. The only reason I tell you this is so you can write it down. I'm not going to be uh, difficult or, or uh, anything. I just going to have to write it down. So at 8 Excuse me, 12.38 a.m., Mercury goes into Sagittarius on Halloween morning. So that's the beginning of the day. And so it is uh, in Sagittarius starting pretty much November, the very bitter end of October. So we've got a lot going on. It's going to be a big weekend because there's a lot of aspects going on. That will probably be next week's show talking about Halloween weekend because there's a lot of activity that week. Anyway, but. Tomorrow, we have the full moon in Taurus. And so what does that mean? Well, the full moon is a culmination. It is a ripening of energy. It, interestingly, though, is only at the early, early degrees of uh, Taurus. So it's at one degree and 
13, and this is Taurus. So it literally just goes into Taurus at 10.33 a.m. tomorrow, Eastern, and it conjuncts Uranus immediately upon entering. So there's going to definitely be some uh, strong energy around security and money. And I can tell you, I was just checking on the stock market right now. Everything on here is down. We got the Dow Jones down, NASDAQ down, Apple, eBay, Google, everything on my general list, Disney, Amazon, Etsy, I would follow Etsy, um, Netflix, PayPal, all down uh, on stock market. So I'm guessing it's probably only going to exacerbate it tomorrow with the moon and Uranus conjunct. And I'll tell you why. Because moon, again, is security. Taurus is money, monetary systems, and finances. Uranus generally, well, overall, rules the eccentric, the unusual, and the unexpected, and things you cannot foresee. Of course, as an astrologer, my whole realm is about foreseeing because astrology is ruled by Uranus. So, you know, knowing that things are unexpected um, kind of is part of the, the uh, oh, what is the word? <laughs> part of the job description. Anyway, um, moon security going into Taurus, wanting things to be solid, wanting things to be traditional, because again, it's an earth sign. Things down to earth wants A plus B to equal C. Uranus is trying to upset that. So it can mean that anything can happen. The stock market can go up radically, or it can drop out from under you. And I can tell you, there is a very good chance somebody's going to win that Powerballs are not the Powerball, the Mega Millions for one and a half billion dollars uh, because they, I believe it's pulled tonight right as the moon is full, culminating, and uh, right on the precipice of going into Taurus. So somebody's probably going to win. And uh, the moon is getting fuller in Aries. So it's it's taking action towards something. So Buying those tickets, you know, getting out there and doing something, taking an action, initiating something, and then immediately seeing the results and the fruition of those actions taken. But the little codicil, the little exception is Uranus is about to go back into Aries. And so when Uranus goes back into Aries, it's going to be back Again, really, we are dealing with this aggressive energy. It is upsetting everything and everyone. It's wanting to turn things on their head. Um, so let's see. It's right around the 7th. And when I look it up, I'll tell you, because I look at a table, and the table tells you where the planets are each day. But, of course, it doesn't go minute by minute or hour by hour. So it just tells you when it's changed signs, but it doesn't tell you the moment. What tells me the moment is the daily planetary guide or, you know, doing it through the software. But I use Llewellyn's daily planetary guide, which they come out with every year, and that will show you day by day the exact time that planets shift signs, when they go retrograde, if you're studying and want to find out more, that's how you can find it out. So, um, Let's see, I was just looking up Uranus. Uranus is around the 7th, so let's see what time it actually... Uranus enters, of course, I'm just going to assume it's always the day before because that's the pattern. On the 6th, Uranus enters Aries at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, and I'll let you do the math for Central and Mountain, but it's happening the 6th in the afternoon, so guess what? That's our election day. And so the day starts out, moon trine Neptune in water signs at 1.30 a.m. The moon conjuncts Venus in Libra. It inconjuncts Chiron at 5.12 a.m. The poles open between then and when the moon enters Scorpio at 8 a.m. So that is actually a very interesting aspect because when the moon enters Scorpio, it looks for the hidden, it looks for the emotional, it looks for the value and gets rid of what is unvalu invaluable, uh, not valuable, I'll just say not valuable. Then the moon opposes Uranus at 8.03 a.m. Very interesting. I'm not sure what time the polls open, whether they're open at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., but I can tell you they're only going to be open an hour before 
a lot happens. So, um, again, it seems when we have Uranus involved in a strong manner, it can mean many things. It can mean that we're going, well, actually, what I would predict is the moon in, in Sagittarius, <laughs> excuse me, the moon in Scorpio, which rules joint finances in opposition to Uranus in Taurus retrograde is definitely going to have a stock market or a business aspect to our decision. Now, does that mean that we're concerned about our taxes? Maybe, because that's Scorpio. Or does it mean we're concerned about the stock market and our investments? Probably, because that's Taurus. Does it mean that we are concerned about the money for everyone? Yes, because that's Uranus. Does it mean we can believe in it? Probably not. We're not really sure what's going to happen. I can almost predict, <laughs> looking at what's happening, that day Uranus goes into Aries, again, male energy, and that happens at 2 p.m. It's going to be uh, basically a quilt of different opinions that happen throughout the day. Those who are voting on that day, it will probably be a roller coaster ride, and I'm guessing that it's going to have something to do with the stock market. Looking at what the stock market market is doing right now, um, it's going down. So will it continue to go down throughout that time, or will it resolve and change around? I'm guessing that it's going to go down. And part of that is because Uranus is changing signs. It's going back from an Earth sign, practical, pragmatic, into a fire sign. So I'm guessing it's going to be a lot of selling off of real estate, or not real estate, um, stocks that day. And it's probably, well, you know, it's probably not a stretch to even say that the stock market is associated with the election. It's going to be associated. So I'm guessing that if the election doesn't go a particular way, people are going to probably be selling off stocks. Um, is that a reason to vote a certain way? Some people think it is. I don't think it is. I think I'm definitely a person who believes that people should come before money, but I do believe that money is what it takes to get along in this world right now. And so I guess to you, but Uranus enters Aries at 2 p.m. that afternoon, and then the moon sextiles Saturn and Capricorn. And so that means information coming out is in alignment with um, – collective view of government authority and structure so what is that view we're not sure the day started out with uranus in taurus and it will be in positive aspect to capricorn and saturn but it ends in more positive aspect to the planets in scorpio so we'll see it's going to be interesting. So I'll probably, like I said, I'll talk more about it. Although I did tell you a lot. I'll probably do more in-depth uh, day of the election analysis. But getting back to today, I got a little sidetracked with that. <laughs> I guess probably part of the reason is my sister's in town and she's having conversations with my parents. And they're at opposite sides of the the uh, particular political spectrum and so she called or texted just before the show started so it was on my mind anyway so uh sun and venus conjunct in scorpio mercury and jupiter conjunct in scorpio it is again it's about ego it's about shining a light on what's hidden venus is retrograde she will be going back into libra but right now she is approaching the sun and so the view, the light is being shown on the story, again, women's stories, women's issues, what's hidden, what has been happening behind the scenes. We may find out some more information in the next few days, likely because the sun is shining light on the dark and Scorpio has got a lot of dark to bring up. Then Mercury and Jupiter. Jupiter is travel. Mercury rules short distance travel. And so the two together means we are really wanting to leave where we're at or leave the situation or transform it somehow. And this is a deep psychological transformation. I can tell you I'm very much in that energy right now. And um, it's like every day, every day I think, well, how long before I can really 
be where I want to be. And then the other side of it is, okay, what can we do to align ourselves with the inevitability of a shift? Because it's coming. Jupiter going into Sagittarius is absolutely a shift in the transformation. And it is the beginning of a year of moving and transforming. We are not going to just desire it anymore. We are going to take action because Sagittarius is a fire sign ruled by Jupiter. It's in its own sign as of the 6th, the evening of the 6th. So we are going to be a country on the go, a world on the go. And we are being driven in the next year when Jupiter is in Sagittarius to really embrace alternative cultures. That's what Sagittarius, that's what Jupiter rules. It rules cultures of foreign lands and peoples. So Jupiter is also the great benefic. So keep that in mind. It is people who are far away having an expression, having an expansion and a transformation, and we come together. And it's fortunate. Our fortune lies in bringing people together, especially for this next year. With the last degrees of Scorpio, it is wrapping up the old story around understanding our value. And are we living in our truth and valued the way we need to be valued? Now, moving on, Saturn in, in uh, Capricorn, in positive aspect to the Sun-Venus conjunction. So, again, I want to reiterate for everybody who's going through a lot right now, it is a refinement of where we're heading. We know where we're heading. We feel it in our bones. We feel it in our emotions. We feel it in the Capricorn, which is the structure in the bones, and Scorpio, which is the emotions, and visceral life compass. I can't express this enough. I mean, right now, I've got all these planets having either just gone over my moon Neptune conjunction in my first house or about to. And so I'm really aware of the Scorpio energy, as is most people in the last year when it comes to the deep, visceral life emotions that make us feel, are we where we need to be right now? And so having that energy in positive aspect to Saturn and Saturn's only at four degrees Capricorn. He's going to be going through all the rest of the degrees. He's going to be hitting all those planets we have in Scorpio one by one. And when he does, he's going to want us to align with that structure, with the physical um, creation of where we need to be and what we need to be doing our life purpose. That's what he rules. And he can also rule karma and not can. He is the karmic taskmaster. So he's going to show you where you need to align through putting your face right up to the glass. So if you feel restricted somehow, it's because your muscles are being tested so that you can be strong and move forward and do what you need to do and create the kind of environment, the kind of support system. And remember, Capricorn is systems. So you're going to have that environment around you that pushes you out into the right direction. The planets are very much right now acting in tandem, in concert, to give you the understanding, the knowing, the wisdom, and the people and environment to do what you're here to do. It's a very big time on the face of the earth right now for everybody really realigning to their inner truth, to knowing what's good for their lives and moving in that direction. And I can tell you from personal experience, if you're suffering, you're out of alignment because spirit does not guide you towards suffering. It guides you towards happiness. So I hope that helps you in discerning what's going on in your life. Okay. So we also have Pluto at 18 degrees Capricorn in po well, positive aspect to Mercury at 20 Scorpio, but of course, Mercury at 20 Scorpio is just a little past 18. So he's kind of moving closer to Jupiter before he retrogrades. He's going to talk to Jupiter. He's going to have this wonderful conversation about, are you doing what you want and putting yourself first? Because Jupiter is king of self-interest. He knows how to put his needs before others. And that can be negative if it is self-interest with fraud or with criminal intent or malice. But when it's in 
concert with positive energies and moving with others and aware that there's a collective going on or a cooperation somewhere, it can be wonderful. But ultimately, Jupiter will always look to personal interests first. So while it can be negative, it can also be positive to drag you out of your codependent relationships. And in Scorpio, it's likely you have some of those somewhere. And I can tell you Scorpio merges and wants to merge with other people. So having a transformative planet like Jupiter at n degrees means that you are going to be turned away from that codependent relationship through the behaviors that are making you suffer. And you are going to see the light at the end of the tunnel, which is Sagittarius, guiding you to make a change, make a shift, maybe even move, pursue a degree, pursue music, pursue the arts, pursue sports, anything that you feel terribly comfortable with and happy about. It is your happy place. We're coming into a year of a happy place. And I can tell you when Uranus hits Taurus again next March and is direct and we have Jupiter in Sagittarius. Yes, they are at uncomfortable odds by angle, but they're both in optimistic signs. So it is going to be about a shift culturally for the world towards other cultures in a positive sense. And there will be the retrogrades and the directs, but it is a much more optimistic energy. Scorpio is a rather depressive energy, and it looks deep down dark. And so it focuses focuses us on that heavy energy. It puts our attention on dying, depression, sadness, and wants to understand it, seeks to look inside of that. So that's what the year has been with Jupiter and Scorpio. Now, Jupiter is also like I said, a positive sign. So it's also attempting to shed transformation on darker tendencies that we've been experiencing. So it's transformative and it will give us the spoils of the difficult route. And that means when it goes into Sagittarius, a lot of what we felt standing our way is going to drop in our lap. You know, or what is being held away from us will come to us. So um, I think that it's going to be a much easier time then because we won't be no we won't be fighting what we aren't necessarily aware of, and that can come also from Neptune. Neptune hides things as well because Neptune rules Pisces, the twelfth house of the subconscious, and right now Neptune is at thirteen degrees uh, Pisces, and he is retrograde. And that means that he is also going to see some energy from Scorpio when the sun gets there in two weeks. And that will be a new moon. And I'm not going to get into that right this second. But we're going to have the moon over there in a couple weeks lighting up. this. Or <laughs> it will be waning. So it won't be really light. But it will be there enhancing. Let's just put it that way. The other area of the sky than, than it is now. So it'll be over in the Scorpio Sagittarius area. And so that's going to give it um, a little bit more of a kick and more water again when uh, the moon gets to the water energies. So, oh my goodness, uh, did I say everything I wanted to say? Taurus, um, yeah, I think I kind of said that. It's uh, The full moon means that it's a culmination, a financial culmination. And then right after it starts to wane, so after tomorrow morning, the moon, we will still feel the fallout for a few days. I think it is a really great financial uh, fortunate time this week. But I can tell you we are going into a pretty volatile uh, financial energy right now with the sun opposing Uranus and Uranus retrograde changing signs. So it's going to be pretty much a roller coaster of energy. And I'm sorry, I wish I could say otherwise, but I can tell you, Whenever Uranus is heavy in the mix, it's going to be the unexpected, and it's going to be that which cannot be predicted necessarily. So um, that's why if you understand the nature of Uranus, you can maybe a little bit more understand how it triggers energy. And part of the energy, the last thing I'll say is it's going back into a fire sign, and it is an air planet, air and fire, and it's going to be probably some more fires in California. And it also rules firefighting. Uh, so 
fires tend to just be the word of the day when Uranus goes back in. So that'll be, again, it's about two weeks away. But um, anyway, I don't know. <laughs> That's not a very happy, positive note. But I can tell you Jupiter is going to be very happy and positive, And it will be clarifying and enlightening for all of us. It's going to pull out the hidden and lay it flat out so we all can see it. And that may actually be beneficial to voting. So we're going to have a lot to think about this election day coming up. Anyway, I'm going to take a quick break. And then after the break, I want to um, give you a little information about what this song is that I'm playing for the break.
welcome back. You are listening to the Astro Energy Astrology Show on Blog Talk Radio. My name is Shelley Overton. I'm an astrologer in Orlando, Florida. And if you would like to have a private reading with me, you can get me at angeliczodiac.com or astrologerangel.com. And also look me up on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Okay, so that song is done by my friend Tracy Coriel. She has an album for sale, and that song in particular was the first al- first song from the album, and I actually helped her shoot the video for that, and so she just released the video last week, and it's also connected to my YouTube channel, so if you would like to see the video and uh, enjoy it or give her comments, you can go to uh, tracyland.com, T R A. C-E-Y-L-A-N-D.com. You can also purchase the song through there or listen to other music and also check out the video. So anyway, I hope you do because it's really a wonderful song. She just has such an amazing talent as a singer and songwriter. Okay, so let's see who we have on the line here. Okay, come on, computer. There you go, 303. Hi, 303. How are you? Oh, are you? Hi. Hi. Is this me? Are you there? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Who am I talking to? Oh, this is Kim. Oh, could you spell that? (laughs) Could you spell your name for me? I'm sorry. I I, I wasn't. I'm going to slow down. Okay, one more time. Kim. K-I-M. Kim. Okay, there you go. Okay, Kim. I want to make sure. Sorry, Kim. Hi, Kim. (laughs) So, I, oh my goodness! Oh, congratulations! So, are you Buddhist? Yeah. I Aww. am for just over ten years, I think. Yeah. Wow. Just uh, coming up, coming up on eleven. Oh so my goodness! Exciting. Congratulations! Yeah, that's um, exciting. <laughs> so, well, okay. Well, give me just one. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Seven twenty six sixty four. I think we have a delay. We have a delay. So, or at oh. least I hear one. Hang okay. on, just one second. I guess. I, okay, now start over. What what day and then place July, and time? Okay. July twenty six. Two five. Two five. Okay. No, two six. Two six. Got it. That's why I'm repeating. I'm like sorry for the audience <laughs> listening in. Okay. So, do you know what time you were born? At uh, twelve twenty two, a.m. Okay. Okay. And where? And Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Oh, okay, wonderful. All right, so what can I do for you today, Kim? I <laughs> uh, uh, just wanted to find out what stands out um, relationship-wise. Okay. My program does not like abbreviation, so I'm going to spell out Fort Campbell and see if that makes a difference here. It did. Awesome. Okay, you said relationships? Well, anything that stands out, but, yeah, that's kind of almost on my mind. Okay, wonderful. Let's see what we have. Oh, you're going to have a good year. (laughs) Yeah, you've got a 29-degree Taurus rising, which puts 29 Scorpio on your house of marriage, and currently Jupiter is about three degrees away from going into your house of marriage. So that's Mm. pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, You're not married, are you? No, I, I met okay. someone, but um, his life's a mess, and it, he's kind of trying to put the brakes on. So I was mm-hmm. wondering what the deal is there. Okay, well, how long ago did you meet him? Um, it was just the beginning of August. Okay, well, that's pretty recent. So um, mm-hmm. I can tell you if you put the brakes on and you met him then, it was probably the Venus retrograde that was happening. And, mm-hmm. again, Venus is retrograde until the beginning of, I want to say, what did I say? The 16th? I think, yeah, the 16th of yeah. um, November. So you've still got a couple of weeks. So uh, what what is his yeah, sun sign? Um, well, I know his birthday is 625-1969. I don't okay. know what time. Okay. Um, Let me just do that. And He's a cancer. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just going really slow and he's very um, hesitant. Oh, okay. Well, does he tell you why? Just because his um, past choices have oh, okay. are 
kind of, he's just trying to iron out circumstances mm-hmm. from his past. Okay. Well, let's just look. I'm just looking at that date and see what he's got going on. And he's got Venus and Taurus. So he has a pretty strong Venus and it's being affected right now by Venus retro because it's an opposition. So it literally is opposing him and he has Saturn and Taurus as well. So let me see. He's got 29 degree Libra. I'm just going by a, a midnight chart. So he may actually have moon in Scorpio, which makes him extremely engaged, like I said, in wanting a relationship. But he does have also Neptune in Scorpio. So a lot of the planets going through Scorpio right now, he does want to have a relationship. And um, finances and his own worth mean a great deal. But I can tell you uh, Mercury in Gemini and Mars in Sagittarius he has a hard time settling down and with Jupiter about to go on top of his Mars, he, I think that's also influencing him because you've got a 26 Scorpio Neptune and currently in the sky, uh, Jupiter's at 26. So literally you're being influenced also by the ruler of Sagittarius. And it is about the freedom to move and travel and go where you want to go. And he's got a Mars that exemplifies that, meaning how he takes action in his life is about being free and being free to move. So, um, but I will tell you having Mars and Sagittarius also, he's going to be opening up to religion and spirituality in the next year because he has to take action somehow towards spirituality. That's what his Mars wants to do and expand himself. So, um, there's an opportunity there, but I would honestly say give it until Venus goes direct. And when Venus goes direct, you're probably going to hear back from him. And especially because right around that time, like I said, Jupiter goes into Sagittarius and that's going to lift up his Mars. Um, The one caution I would say is that it's probably not completely honest about all of his relationship availability for you. Um, I'm not necessarily saying he's going to, be someone who is unfaithful, but um, he does have a strong energy around moving and keeping going. So if he isn't, like if he's a traveler or does some kind of travel with his job, he's going to be that way all the time. But Mars, he has a Mars retrograde, early Sag means it's going back into Scorpio at some point in his life. So by progression, he may already have a Scorpio Mars And that means he is very much engaged. So I would just say, um, first off, wait for him to see, I mean, not wait, like don't not get on with your life. Definitely get on with your life. But if he's going to come back, he'll come back after Venus goes direct and Jupiter goes in on top of his Mars. And that's mid, mid November. Um, He came in fairly recently. And the reason I asked that is because a lot of shifts have been happening with relationships and people have been getting rid of ones that don't work and then drawing in new ones that are more in alignment with the way they're going to be expressing energy as um, a couple planets go back direct. And so if you've met someone more recently, I would say that they're more in alignment with what you're looking for. But if he were like, say a year ago, it was probably transitional so that's the only reason I ask how long you've known him. So it's been fairly recent and he disappeared under a Venus retrograde. So I would tend to say that he's probably going to pop back in when Venus goes direct. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're still in contact. He's just, you know, okay. trying to control it. <laughs> oh, well, I can also tell you that Jupiter is right on your Neptune and, um, it's uh, let me see I take it back it just went over your Neptune because you have a 15 degree Neptune in Scorpio so it was just there and it is trying to expand your sense of value and stick up for yourself and especially in your work environment that's where it's transiting right now but it will be in that relational part where you may have in the past felt well actually you have a lot of Sagittarius there most of your house of marriage and commitment to a partner is Sagittarius. So you're the type who really needs to have a lot of freedom too in the relationship. So, and you have Uranus in the house of home and family. So yeah, you really need to not be bogged down by other people's emotionalism, even though you have a lot of water energy in your chart. 
Um, you you are a committer, but you like to have freedom once you've committed. So it's kind of a dichotomy, but really what it is is you have this wonderful need to connect, but then once we're connected, don't tell me what to do. And so, yeah, he could be good for that. I mean, his his Mars is literally just one degree inside your house of marriage and commitment, so he's probably feeling the pull. Um, the only mm-hmm. concern I have is that when someone runs away because it's too much, that's a big mm-hmm. red flag for me. Like, you know, they may be the best person ever, but if they're running away when it seems really good, then they're not mm-hmm. ready to commit. Um, yeah, and then he's got Uranus retrograde, or everyone has Uranus retrograde in Taurus right now, going back into Aries. And so Uranus just was in his house of subconscious, and it's going back towards his soul group. So he still has to double check and make sure that going in the direction he wants to, we all do. But for him, it's kind of triggering some subconscious things. So um, I would honestly just give him a little bit of space and not let him control you, which you're not going to let him do. <laughs> I know you and your chart. <laughs> no, that- it's like, no. And uh, let's see, he also has some, he has his Venus or no, his Mercury is close to your Venus in your chart. You're both in the same sign. So he has to communicate. Like it's just a thing with him. He has to, because he has Mercury and Gemini. So he's not going to completely not communicate, but um, just see how it plays out over the next month. Okay. And see if he is with you at Thanksgiving and don't waste too much time if he's not around, but if he's going to come back, he'll come back after Venus goes direct and he'll want something. But the last thing I will say is he's like, when you have Gemini, you've got to pay attention to the I'm in and I'm out kind of energy because that's the energy of Gemini. So there, I mean, and you've got it too. So like, you want to have something, but you may change your mind or it's not interesting enough. So I'm going to go over here. So just pay attention to how people behave and literally actions speak louder than words. If you can keep that at the forefront of your mind, just pay attention to actions when you date. So it's nice what you're saying, but what you're doing is who you are. And if you're okay with that, then move forward. But um, definitely you have some, you're going to be really appealing to people. And especially if you go for some um, adventures, you're going to be like a lightning rod for the opposite sex. So definitely, um, you know, give yourself a chance. There's a lot out there for you. It's not just him. Okay. (laughs) All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. How to answer without answering. I'm sorry. (laughs) But no, I I would give him a chance. But and see how he behaves. But um, yeah. yeah, just with the little yellow flag, okay? Yeah, and that's how he is. Just uh, operating with a lot of caution and not wanting to jump mm-hmm. too fast too soon. And so he's trying to create a foundation and go a little slower. So well, that's good. That's mm-hmm. respectable. And mm-hmm. I can tell you, Uranus um, in Taurus, he's really going to take his time. I mean, he has Taurus in the 12th house. So this is someone who has to really take more time than your average person to, you know, get going. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Patience isn't my virtue. (laughs) I know. I know. Well, you have Uranus and Virgo. You're that generation and Uranus and Pluto and Virgo, which means like once you make a decision, you're good to go and you make a decision pretty quickly. (laughs) So, um, you know, again, if he's slow, that's something to take into account. If you need someone who can move quicker and really engage, then just take it all into account, see what he does. But I can tell you, you've got a lot of positive energy coming for romance. Okay. So don't necessarily put all your eggs in one basket. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for the call yep. and good talking to another Buddhist. Oh, <laughs> take care. Thank you and take so care. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye, bye bye, Kim. All right. Let's take 651. Hi, 651. How are you? Hi, Shelly. No, I'm Hi. Good. This is Linda in Minnesota. Oh, okay. Hi, Linda in Minnesota. I've got your chart right here. What can uh, I do for you today? <laughs> um, so as I was listening to you, I was realizing that there must be a lot being highlighted in my chart right now with this full um, moon. I'm wondering if the full moon is a shining light on anything specific. 
Um, let's see, Taurus, 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 Taurus. For, so, well, other than being conjunct Uranus, which it will be, um, it's communications. And let's see, yeah, it's talking a lot about money and security and um, your personal value. Like I say, Taurus rules personal value. And it's opposite. What's really, you know, like, yes, that's a big deal, but it's also opposite the sun and the sun is really highlighting um, education and expansion and your Sagittarius house. So you've got all of those planets in Scorpio in the Sagittarius house. So, and that's opposite the full moon for you. And so that's really where a lot of energy is at. And then Jupiter's at your mid heaven. So I don't know if I told you that last time I talked to you, but that's like a lot of um, attention and fame based on like your your insight and insightfulness okay Ooh. and you know knowing you're really of worth again it's on your midheaven which is your career and so you know that's where your focus is right now a lot of your focus and it's on education do you i i want to ask you do you do anything politically or you know maybe in the or anything no, I, I I don't do anything politically, and I hardly even mm-hmm. <clears throat> listen to the news or anything. It, it things come up, and I just kind of roll mm-hmm. my eyes. <laughs> yeah, I get you. Um, you know, and, well, and so, so I don't get in, I don't get embroiled in the political um, well, you're the political aspects. <laughs> I pray a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, that's actually really helpful right now. I mean, honestly, when you can't do anything and you see uh, things and happening. Hold, and hold. Yeah, really, hold really, space, hold light. Yeah, I'm holding the vibration of love. Yeah, that's and, a wonderful uh, thing to do. There is a lot of um, the a lot of the money and the insecurity, money insecurity is really mm-hmm. up big time for me right mm-hmm. now, and um, and also you know assessing my certainly assessing my value. I I posted a a special offer on my Linda Waltz Loving Wellness Facebook page for thirty nice. minutes. Coaching and healing sessions for eighteen dollars, and I that's haven't a great gotten deal. even a nibble. In, well, um, say it again slower. What is the what's the website again? So it's my Facebook page. It's Linda Waltz W A L T Z Loving okay. Wellness. Okay, eighteen dollars. There was a great actually deal. somebody from the show oh, two weeks that. ago that sent me an email, and I answered her, and I never did hear oh. back from her. So, so that was miraculous. She found she found the page. That's um, awesome. But really, I'm assessing because um, I'm a I know I'm a good healing facilitator. Mm-hmm. You know, I have lots of background. I have you know, I have counseling mm-hmm. background. I have you know the massage and and, and um, therapeutic body mm-hmm. work background, and then the, and then Wonderful. all of the energy work energy energy modalities that I do. And yeah, I was so, going to so say really energy good, and I'm ready to serve and waiting mm-hmm. anxiously for the opportunity to do so. Well, you will. I think even just calling the show and mentioning it out there for everybody to hear, right? hey, everybody, if you're interested in getting a really good deal and doing some energy healing, Linda's mm-hmm. ready and waiting. Yeah, just go check it out. So Jupiter's in your midheaven. You are ready for a big expansion with career. Okay. This coming year, it's there. And um you know, it's the spiritual connection that you're looking for. So Jupiter is going to get you there. And I would also say the thing that's coming through for me is to possibly look into, and I don't know how feasible it is for you, but what I got was do workshops in other locations. Like if you can do a weekend workshop somewhere, or maybe you have a friend who could sponsor you in another city, do that because you'll be training or teaching people and you'll be out in the environment in the world, which is what your Jupiter's going to want you to do. Okay. Oh, that'll be interesting. <clears throat> yeah, I've been thinking yeah. about doing that, <clears throat> doing more and more classes. And be, because um, because I don't see with my eyes, I'm I've really been struggling to, you know, find somebody to assist me. I really need somebody to assist me in those in uh-huh. those venues. Yeah, I know. Um, well. It's about spirituality, and if honestly, the best I can give you is to ask for help spiritually. Like I ask, especially I tell you, Archangel Samuel is one of my favorite archangels to work with. I mean, more and more every time I ask to find something through Archangel Samuel, it's there right away. Like mm. Samuel doesn't waste any time. So 
if you're looking to find someone to help you facilitate your career, ask for help from the archangels. Okay. They're there. They're waiting to do it. That's why I have Angelic Zodiac as my website because I just love the archangels and the angels because they really they are there to help. You just have to ask. That's the the free will will not be usurped. So you have to actually ask before they can help you. Okay. So That's a um, idea. but yeah. Your Jupiter is expanding, and I think that it's going to really bring you in a bunch of new things. You have a lot of cusps being triggered, the Midheaven and also the Money House. Right now, Neptune just went into your Money House. It's retrograde, but when it goes direct, um, that's going to open you up again. So I, you really have to – I mean, I know it's kind of cliche, but really having some faith and also asking for the help just out loud, wherever you need help, like, please give me some help. So November – 24th is Neptune going direct. So by Thanksgiving, not a coincidence, Thanksgiving. Right. Um, yeah, gratitude and asking is going to really help you. But for your chart, okay. it's an expansion of um, spirituality and career. And then right now, Mars is in your house of self. So wanting you, and it's interesting, I think we have this conversation about your eyesight in Aquarius. And yeah. you have the same rising sign as my son who has an eye issue. And his dad, amazingly, just had also an eye issue in the last month. So they both now have their down to vision in one eye. And uh, he can actually get a little understanding of what, what it's like to have restricted vision, which is interesting during a Mars in Aquarius. So, um, you know, that is for many more people to have that experience. <laughs> not to say no, just, I know. I, I totally get you. But I, I do think that there is value in understanding how to use your other mm -hmm. senses. And it's interesting, throughout the course of my life, I've made efforts to seek out other ways of communication and other ways of understanding that kind of thing. And I know it's yeah. really trivial in your world, but like at night when I go to bed, I put things on my bedside table where I can reach them in the dark and I know exactly where things are in the dark. Yeah. And I just often think, well, you know, if I had to live that way, how would I do it? And that's how I would do it. I would put things where yeah. I know where they are. I can find my way without seeing. Yeah. And it's, it's a thing that you have to engage in. And I, I'm probably one of these people who is always curious about other lifestyles and I learned sign language when I was in art school, so I've been able to use that over the years in different business situations, which I'm really thrilled about. And uh, so just putting yourself in other people's shoes who have handicaps, like for a moment, go, what would it be like if I had to live that way? And then, I, I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, I was at Lowe's and I needed help with something and I asked for help. And the man who helped me was deaf and he was about to pull out a pad to write what ask what I needed and I'm like oh I'd, I'll just sign it to you and he had to take a minute I don't think he does that very often he knows sign language but he's like repeat yourself <laughs> I had to do it slow so we understood it which is kind of ironic because you think well they do it all the time and if I only dabble in it he probably knows it better than I do but I actually had to slow down and let him figure it out so it was amusing and, and really heartwarming at the same time but anyway Linda thank you for the call oh. and I wish you the best. I know it's coming. Okay? Yes. Thank you. I'm ready for it. Have a great day. You're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, 760. Let's get you on here. There you go. Hi, 760. How are you? Hi. I'm are you doing well. How are you? Good. Is this Orion? Yeah, this is Orion. Oh, okay. Hi. Uh, what can I do for you? I've got your chart right here. Um, I would love to to hear anything that pops up um, okay. psychologically. Okay. Well, I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of what I was giving the last caller, which is the Scorpio-Taurus axis. And that is your first house with Scorpio because you've got Pluto and Scorpio, Mars and Scorpio, and your south node in Scorpio, mm -hmm. and the sun and Venus are right there right now. So you're going through, like all of the Scorpio energy I've been talking about for the show is dead in your house of self, and it's on your south node. So what it's doing is highlighting your desires and highlighting the desire to find some connections with people, but also putting yourself first. And then you've got Uranus and also the full will be in your house of marriage and partnership. So the whole axis right there of self and others, I, it seems to me, didn't we talk about that last time you called? That seems familiar to me with you. 
I think last time we talked about my family and kind of mm-hmm. just letting go of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. As far as I can remember. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, the Pluto going into your house, home, and family, Mars on the way out. Definitely, you've got stuff going on there as well. And I'll just trigger a touch on that for a brief second with the Mars leaving the house, home, and family in Aquarius. It is about like moving out or moving on from those old issues. And now I'm free. I can truly be free. The transformation is in process because Mars on your Jupiter in Aquarius is about higher understanding and enlightenment and dynamics are understood with that energy and you're able to really process it and say, okay, enough, I'm done. When Mars gets to 17 and into your fifth house, it will go from water to fire and that will really light you up to like move on and take the action to get out of there for good or out of that dynamic. I don't know if you're in a certain home life situation where you're at home, like what you deem to be home, whether it's a partner in that family life or um, the family of origin, but it is coming like around the 25th, which is only a couple days away. So once Mars moves into the fifth house, it'll be like, shoom, you know, okay, now we're on to romance, creativity, all of that. And away from that watery, oh, I've got to have some value with this family, but now you're going to move on to the new stuff. And Aquarius squares Scorpio. So it's also about your desires being challenged. And the commonality between the Aquarius fifth house and the Scorpio first house is creative energy and value. Let me see. Drama. Drama is a commonality of those two. And drama creates an understanding. It creates a contrast to you're aware of something. And it creates attention. And that's a big thing for your chart right now is, is where is the attention put? Are you getting the kind of attention you need for your soul? Especially in the Mars in the Leo house. Leo wants to connect and relate, as does Scorpio. So that's a big thing right now. Um Jupiter on your Saturn, there's some career opportunities coming, and they're going to be strong potential for long-distance career opportunities coming in for you um, by the middle of that's November. Great because my Saturn yeah. is in my second house. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's also couples, too. If you're interested in a relationship that can be creating a couple situation, uh, a partner, but it's also um, travel. The Sagittarius thing is really strong. And in the house of money and investments, I would say there's some housing could either sell a house or buy a house, something like that. Opportunities okay. coming in. All right. And yeah, thank you so much for The show's over, but thank you for your call. Okay, good to know. Thanks. <laughs> okay, take care. Bye-bye. Thanks. All right, that's the end of the show. And um, one real quick question in the chat room. I will go over to the chat room and talk to you for a second after the show. But I want to thank you all for listening in, and we will see you again next week. And I'm so excited. I have the show this week. Yay, it went on air. So thanks for listening. And don't forget to check out YouTube and Tracy Coriel's uh, stuff over there too. Just type in T R A C E Y Coriel C O R Y E L L. Thanks again. Take care. See you next week. Thanks for stopping by Astro Energy this week. If you would like to get a hold of Shelly Overton, you can get her at astrologerangel.com on Facebook at Astro Energy. Or Astrologer Angel. The music was provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com with additional music by Ironwood Rain. Check them out on the net at ironwoodrain.com. To subscribe, please click the picture of Shelley on the right or the red button below.